Dave. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Over Coffee, our morning talk show where we talk about games or just about anything else. Uh, and so come join us, uh, 6.30, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Lit Network. That's right, Long Island Tabletop. That's where we are. Today is in the year of the apocalypse plus uh, 2021. Today is uh, May 26th, Wednesday. So how are you guys doing? You playing any games uh, last couple of days? Um, I have not. Have I? No, I didn't. No. No, no, no. You, you seem to be in meetings to 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock every night. <laughs> I, I was in... Uh, actually, Monday I was in meetings until ten o'clock. Yes, yes. That, that was the last. That was the last meeting of the day for me. Um, and and it was like it, it's this this past Monday was weird because I didn't have the meetings weren't scheduled, right? So I like I had a bunch of meetings, but my last meeting ended around four o'clock. But okay. But when you're not in meetings, your icon goes green. So as soon as my icon goes green, people are like, oh, you got a minute to talk? You got a minute ah. to talk? You got a minute to talk? And then I don't make phone calls. I don't. I don't even pick up the phone most of the time. Like John knows. John calls me. I don't pick up the phone. It, right. I, okay. But like I'll call people back or text them or something like that. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to call my friend John. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call my friend. And, um, and so I do. So I call him. And while I'm on the phone with him, I get two other phone calls and two text messages. I'm like, oh, are you kidding because, me? Because your icon's still green on the computer? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. This was just, this oh. was outside of that. Oh, so okay. I get off the phone with my friend, and I had to call somebody else. Then I had to call somebody else back, and then I had to answer. So it's like I, I didn't have a meeting, but I had a meeting yeah. with several different people. Okay. So I just, I just couldn't get, I couldn't get a break on Monday. I thought piling all my meetings onto Monday would be a good thing just to get them all done in one day, but it's so exhausting. By the time I'm done, it's ten o'clock and I, and I I can't do anything. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. So yes, Zynar, there's talk about game. As you I heard, though, we weren't talking about game. <laughs> oh. I've been playing a lot of online games. Uh, I've been playing through the ages on board game arena. Beyond the Sun on Board Game Arena, and I'm playing Dominions Five on on Steam. You know, so I've been doing those. Pretty, oh, and then with Anthony, I'm playing uh, Stratomatic Baseball, and I'm playing this game called Saw Bat Battalia. It's a it's a nutty nutty medieval infantry cavalry charge war game. So I guess I'm playing five or six games online. Right? Is now. he That's is great. he kicking your butt? Um. Generally, yes, but I have won a couple games uh, right down to the wire. So you know, he's pretty good strategically. Does he laugh when he beats you? Of course. <laughs> but you know, he gets so excited. He's a sore winner. <laughs> um, what about you, John? Uh, did you? Uh, I know you. On Monday, you said you didn't play that much Minecraft over the weekend. Did you do anything? Uh, do anything else? You had your show on Monday night. How did that go? It went really well. Uh, me and Jonah would have our baby tops, but we ended up going a whole hour. Um, he had a really good idea for this campaign to work on. And then we started building on top of that, and it just really went off. Okay. okay. You, were, you kind of broke up halfway through, so we didn't get the whole thing? Oh, uh... Are you talk among yourself. Okay. Yeah, you would think you would think he was on the Bluetooth. I think you would think the Bluetooth would be like high tech and not not do that. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Stupid Bluetooth. Is it a sense sensitivity setting or something? Maybe. Can you hear me better now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred thousand. I don't know why the Bluetooth headphones are just not great, but whatever. Um, so you were saying Monday Monday night show was what? No, it went pretty well. You know, we were planning on only doing about half an hour, but we ended up going for the full hour because we just fell into like a good groove. Okay. And, um, I was just kind of, you know, pitching Jonah a bunch of stuff for his this campaign he's working on for Into the Odd. Into the um, Odd. I have kind of gone back to. Hey, Doug. Is that Doug? No. Mm -mm. Oh, I thought I heard Doug's voice. 
down. Doug's not I got it. I've been got... playing a couple of retro games. Um, going back to some GameCube titles. Oh, is, that's cool. Um, and the only downside is there's a couple of games that uh, either haven't gotten sequels in a long time or will never actually get continued because of all legalese issues and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like the, the games themselves are fun, but it's disappointing because you might not see more like them in the future. All right. I got it. So are you playing the GameCube on Switch or on something else or, or really on a GameCube? You can't, you can't play it on Switch. Okay. So unfortunately, like now, you have to either play it on either a Wii or an actual GameCube Wii. or play it on the PC. Well, that's weird. You can play it on the Wii, but you can't play it on Switch? Well, the Wii had a disk drive. The Switch doesn't. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. I'm with you. That's one of the complaints that people have been talking about Nintendo, which is, you know, one of the things we could talk about. So Nintendo's adding a couple more online titles to their services today, you know, because they've been putting Nintendo and Super Nintendo games on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the problem is, is that they, they're not having too much luck getting third parties on board. So like the pickings are really kind of like not really much of anything to celebrate. Hmm. So they, they're going to add titles as time goes on, I guess. Well, I guess I, I guess I'd like to understand why they're having problems with third party. Well, the issue is that like they've been adding titles since it came out. Like the Nintendo, like the Super Nintendo service came out, um, not last year, but the year before in October. And then Nintendo games was the year prior. The issue though is that other than first party titles, you know, there's only so many deals they can make with third parties. And part of it is because a lot of companies are just releasing their content on their own, partly because Nintendo kind of didn't really make any moves initially. Either they dragged their feet or they didn't want to, like the, the issue with, with gaming companies is nobody ever, nobody ever outright puts all the information on the table so people know, you know, what did you guys try, what didn't work, whatever. So as a result, nobody really knows who's making what decisions or what actually is going on. So when st stuff happens and companies decide, well, you know, if Nintendo's not going to play ball or why should we play ball with Nintendo when we could just release this and sell it on our own? Right. Nobody knows if they even made that attempt or not, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But you would think a third party, uh, I, you would think the issue would be more is deeper because um, you would think a third party who's put out a game for Nintendo in the past would want to get that game emulated again because I'm sure there's some sort of uh, royalties or something that they would get. I don't know. I, you're right. There's probably just bad deals going on and Nintendo doesn't want to, de doesn't want to take part in it, which kind of is crappy for the end user, but that's what usually happens. Well, because it could be that, like, say a company like Capcom, Capcom has a lot of games that came out for the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. Yep. But the only ones that really get a lot of um, attention are like the Mega Man games because they, they'll they resell those constantly. Like here's Mega Man collections. Here's right. it on every console other than the sun. Right. But like Capcom's not going to turn around and then say, well, what about all these other games that we made for the Nintendo? What about trying to sell those? And it's like, well, they don't have their own digital platform. You can't really buy them on the PC. So it's like, you know, they're not going to go out of their way to release that. But if but if they go to Nintendo and say, hey, why don't you pay us, let's say, X amount of dollars and we'll let you put this on your console thing. And Nintendo says no. Or Nintendo says, well, that's too high. Then, yeah, it's just going to go back and forth and nothing's ever going to happen, you know? Yeah. Well, they say, let's hold off and see if we can maybe resell this at some point. Yeah. So Zynar said, so Nintendo can emulate their own games. This is true. That's about it. Maybe Nintendo isn't offering a good enough deal to bring those games to the service. You know that 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 could be it too, right? Um, you know they want something, and like and like John is saying, they say, "Oh, I can make more money doing it myself." And while that's that's great, you know, it does kind of cut out the um, the consoles because a lot of a lot of times when they do it themselves, it's not like they have another console to go on. They wind up doing it for PC. Which I don't mind. I have a PC, but I don't I haven't played those titles. But I, I'm not going to go out 
And here's what's interesting. This is just me, right? As the, just a typical. I'm not going to go out looking for an old Capcom play game to play on my PC. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not saying that's going to be with every single title. If there's a title I super want, yeah, I might do it. But I generally like to play the game on a console because I feel the the experience on a console is different than a PC. Does that make sense? Right. But usually most of these things actually come to the console first, PC later. So it's it's not exactly the same way you might be phrasing it. But um, I'll give no, no, you no, no. I know, I know, I know. But like people like going out and releasing their own games now, PC is the easiest way to get your game out there by yourself. Right. But, oh yeah, yeah. But that's you know that's that's a kind of a different story. Uh, here's here's a better example. So Nintendo, uh, Capcom made a lot of Disney games for the Nintendo back in the day. You know, they made it stuff based on the TV show. So like DuckTales and Chippendales right. Rescue Rangers and all that stuff. And for a while, nobody could play those games unless you actually owned the physical copies or you, or you pirated them. Because uh, you, it was not just Capcom. It was probably Capcom and Disney or the negotiate together because Disney owns those characters and Capcom produced the video games. So what ended up happening was a couple of years ago, they finally entered into some kind of a deal and they made what's called the Disney Afternoon Collection, which was, again, a bunch of those Nintendo games repackaged into a single collection. And then they put that out on, funny enough, they put it out on everything that's not Nintendo Switch. Like the company where those games started from didn't have that uh, collection. I don't know if they later bought it to the Switch, but I know that like it was only available on like uh, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, I think. Yeah, okay. But the same thing, Capcom also made a bunch of Super Nintendo titles. Like they made it based off of Goof Troop and they made a bunch of Mickey Mouse games. Um, and those were pretty good. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, is anybody going to re-release those games so that other people can play them? Because again, I'd have to be Capcom would have to negotiate with Disney and, you know, do they even approach Nintendo or not? And, you know, are they willing to do that? Is it, does it seem lucrative or profitable? And if it's, if the answer to that question is no, then those games are just going to be lost forever, you know, unless you pirate them. Hmm. Interesting. Which is just kind of like an interesting situation to be in, to have it where, you know, you have games where, um, yeah, you know, this this is just essentially never going to see the light of day. Not not that people might not be interested, right? But just because um, there's too many hands involved, and how do you evenly divvy that up so that everybody gets their fair piece? You know, hands, right? No, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Oh well. <clears throat> So, on to our next topic, which is what, John? Um, Family guests. Why can't they wake up when you do? <laughs> <laughs> what is that about? So, John has guests at his house, and he's trying to be quiet when he goes upstairs. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> You know, I understand. I understand that. So that. So that was. Like, yeah. Why can't they get up at six o'clock in the morning? Why can't they wake up with you? <laughs> because it always seems. It doesn't matter. Like it, it doesn't matter how late you want to sleep. Your guests always seem to sleep later. <laughs> that's the, that's the first topic that uh, that's that topic's never been discussed in any talk show before. <laughs> you see, you see. Now we're the first. There we go. We're unique. We're unique. You. <laughs> I have forgotten what it's like to have family guests over that went during the pandemic. Well, usually the reason why they sleep in is because it's, you know, you're, not, you're not sleeping where you normally do. You know, like you're sleeping at like some other house or somewhere where it's a little bit different than your normal situation. So as a result, you usually don't sleep as well, you know, because like either you're sleeping on like a mattress that you're not accustomed to or uh, worse, you're sleeping on a couch. Yeah. So it's like you're probably tossing and turning all night. You're not really getting a good night's sleep. Or or it took you a while to fall asleep, so then you're sleeping later. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
I don't like or it. Or what's what's the point of getting up early? I normally get up early, make coffee, or watch a video before I go to work or something. Do over coffee, but if I'm over at somebody else's house, I got no responsibilities for the morning time. That's so that maybe that's the key right there. Assign guest responsibilities in the morning so they'll get them off. Right. Your job is to make coffee. Your job is to make bacon. Right. Right. You make you make coffee. You got to walk the dog. I'm sorry, man. You're, yeah, you, you got to walk shortest. the dog. <laughs> You drew the shortest straw. Sorry. I give, I give you I give you free lodging, so you got to walk the dog at six thirty. Yeah, I'll pay for the food. You just got to make it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I understand that sign off. He says his body just wakes me up early. Stupid body. Oh, it's boy. true. Uh, so, so we are light on topics today. Um, so what we're gonna do? Uh, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, we have a move coming up. We are going to be moving to our YouTube channel. We always had a YouTube channel. We just always did the live show here. Um, but we are going to move to our YouTube channel and we are going to do some, we're going to record sessions and put them up. So that way we can be more focused in on news topics and various uh, topics and community that we normally do, which is fine. Yes, back to YouTube. Um, we just we just won't get the live interaction, so we will miss Zynar. Although I guess he'll have to be on our show now. Well, actually, he'll he'll either have to watch the video, or now he'll just have to come and talk with us. Yeah, so we can we can work out schedules that will work for most people. Or, or, you know, uh, no, actually, we're not going to Gen Con this year, Zynar. I apologize. They the fact that they moved it to September did not work with any of us with anybody. You know, that's in that's during the school year. So they're doing live convention, but in September? Yeah, they moved it from August to September, you know, mm -hmm. and Courtney's got school, and um, I won't be able to make it either. September is mm -hmm. a bad month for me to go conventions. So I'm gonna, we're going to have to pass this year. Wow. Yeah. But how many, how many conventions do you think are going to start up this year? This year, not a lot. Right. Um, I, I think Origins also got pushed to to September. Um, I'm so. thinking about going to. Uh, uh, there's a convention, a war gaming convention in Connecticut, uh, in in early November. Yeah, I think I think a few, but not a lot. I think the I think the pickup will be next year. Yeah. You know what? Let me ask a quick question. Thanks. I know we're a little bit light on topics, and part of it's because, you know, I have to, you know, keep my audio levels down a little bit. But just to get you guys' thoughts while I brush my teeth, I know that they've been pulling back a lot of, like, you know, regulations. Like, they've been, like, changing up stances of, like, all right, if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks anymore. And places are starting to open up to the public because people are, you know, pretty much burnt down on COVID. If the number of cases starts to go up, though, like, let's say if you do start to see like an uptrend, do you think there's any way to put the genie back in the bottle? Because I think once you already, like people who are, let's say, hesitant to wear masks or even get vaccinated in the first place are probably going to argue and kick. Now that you've kind of said it's safe, and then like if you try to say, well, actually, it's not safe anymore, they're going to probably, you know, throw some you know, faulty argument in there. Like, sure. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Sorry, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to leave in, in just a minute, so I'll I'll give you some input on that uh, real quick, and then Rich, you can continue. Sure. Uh, that's what sort of happened in Europe over the last you know three or four months. They would have a surge, and so they they do a lockdown, and then they'd open up the lockdown, and then they had a surge, and then they do another lockdown, and you know it got really hard and confusing, and and there was I guess good things about it. Maybe they lowered some of their cases. But yeah, it was really hard on businesses and people, and probably but, a lot of a lot of problems like that. And then I think I think that's just basically what just happened in Michigan about a month and a half ago. They had a huge surge, but they had already opened up most of their stuff, and so the governor decided not to go back into lockdown. And you know, eventually the surge went down. But you know, how many people got infected? How many people got injured? How many people died because of that? That's a very very tough question. A very good question. So I, I think if you look at both of those examples, both in Europe and in Michigan, I don't think they based their um, their laxing of the rules and regulations on anything. 
They just did it based off of feel, and in some cases, that's not that's not good enough. I think, um, John, to your point, this time around, when they're you know they're basing it off of um, they're basing it off of what they know: cases, vaccination rollout, percentages, that type of stuff. And you know, when you say things like vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask, that's a different thing. Uh, to your point, though, I think we're going to see um, the effects of of if there's a surge with vaccinated people, um, because now all the sporting events and we're in the NBA playoffs, uh, the arenas are allowing thousands of people in and into vaccinated sections, and you know, a very few non-vaccinated sections and whatnot. So, I like. I get the idea. Like I understand what they're going for. Uh huh. I think it was just too soon, but part of it is, is that they just, they want to make it look like things are back to normal, mostly for like a morale standpoint, but also unfortunately for an economic standpoint, but like we need to start getting people out there and spending money. You know, we need to keep the economy growing. And as a result, I think that we're going to probably see cases are going to slowly start to trickle up again before we you know, maybe we don't have like a massive explosion like we did before but i'm also i'm worried about variants you know i'm worried about the idea of mixing vaccinated people and non-vaccinated people and what that could do to the virus because i can guarantee like i'll put it this way i've been i went to the on monday i went to the bagel store you know on my way to work after we had the show I'm like and you know a lot of places are like all right you don't have to wear a mask and sure enough there's a couple people in there who still had masks but a lot of people who didn't and there's no way of knowing, short of carting people at the door, whether or not they've been vaccinated. And well, that's well, kind of like a scary thought, you know? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, I get that pers- I get that portion of it. I think people are just not going to wear their masks and you're not going to know whether they're vaccinated or not. But there was a statistic. Um, oh, wow. I can't remember the number. But Long Island is ahead of the curve on the rate of vaccination. And um, I, I saw that somewhere, and I can't I can't remember what the what the details were. I but, think it's probably because we were able to get all available so quickly, you know. I, and like, even though there was limitations at first, like now at this point, they're basically giving people money in the form of scratch offs to go get vaccinated. Well, so it's, that it's, means that they. But the the the, the difference is, is that there's wasn't a lot of coaxing on Long Island, right? People didn't coax people on Long Island. They didn't have to coax anybody on Long Island. They just went and got it. Um, so Zainar said, it's the people that aren't vaccinated that are all happy about no mask rules that worry me. That's true. And then young exactly. kids still can't. Because it's it. like they don't, right. I mean, kids already, I'm, I know kids who aren't really following the mask rules. It's, I think that like, because I was talking with family members, I think that it's a bit too soon to just be like masks off. You know, like it's 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 been barely a year. And even then, it's been less than that since vaccines really rolled out. Like I would say widespread vaccinations only really happened starting in like March. You know, like it was it was a limited it was actually, limited availability. Actually, that was that was mostly a New York thing. Uh, I've talked to people in other states and the other states are would didn't have the same issues that New York did with distribution. So maybe not. Maybe there were some others. But even still, different. even still, you know, there's still uh, people in other states. The, the point is, is that we don't know how people are going to handle, let's say, the government saying, OK, it's your responsibility. You need to be the adult and you need to do the right thing. And I think that, unfortunately, when given that opportunity or that power, a lot of people don't necessarily do what they should be doing or need to be doing. So as a result, I think that it's, you know. I would love to see, like, you know, go, you know, go to conventions again and go to movie theaters and all this stuff. But I think that the push to do so is coming from, uh, from, my, from my cynical standpoint, a very self-centered place. And as a result, we don't know what the long-term, you know, is, I mean, well, we know it could, be, it could be minor. I could be wrong. And it could just be that, you know, everything is fine. You know, there's still maybe persistent cases, but as long as we do booster shots and we you know, wear masks in large public places, like maybe that's different. But I just feel that all the celebrating is a little too soon to be, you know, doing this. That you might be right. You 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 may be right, John. I and I get and I can understand that perspective. Um 
But I think the unfortunate thing is the only way we're going to know is by starting to open this up to see how the numbers go. Um, it Would it be difficult to shut down again? It would, but if that's what they have to do, that's what they have to do. And it'll hurt, but, you know, I think, I think, um, I think it is. So, listen, I still wear my mask sometimes when I go into the stores, right? It depends on the store, right? If I know, and I've already spoken to people in the store, some people don't, like I went to CVS, I wore my mask because I don't think everybody in CVS feels comfortable yet. You know, but when I went to the deli, it was not a big deal. I've talked to them, you know, we, I took off, I took off my mask. So I, 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 I think Zynar said it correctly. There are people that will take off their mask that aren't vaccinated. They know you can't, they know you can't tell, they know you can't ask them. And if you, you know. And you can't approach. It's, there's no way to approach it, right? You just don't know, and it's really that they're the ones who are putting themselves at risk at the moment. So, and that brings us towards the end of our show, John. Yeah, as I quietly leave my house <laughs> with my arms loaded, I've got I got to make a quick stop off at the post office. I got to feed the outside guys. But anyway, yeah, um, that's been another episode of Over Coffee. Uh, join us again on Friday at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, I think Dave has something tonight. He usually has something on Wednesdays. Oh, John's going through his breakup. So thank you for joining us on Over Coffee. We will be switching sometime in June. Am I to... on the network? Oh, yeah, you just yeah you switched over the network. That's okay. I picked up. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and doesn't, Dave, doesn't Dave have a show tonight too? He does have his show tonight. He'll be, he'll be, uh, asking me for the Twitch code anytime tonight. And I usually forget because I'm usually right in the middle of my game when he says, ah. <laughs> thank you very much and good morning. Good morning. There you go.